Hello and welcome to Jarvis Labs, and today we're going to review of the brand new super cool tech plate. We just got one arrived here with this new kit. So we have the Endless Loop Express Train Kit. So we're going to use the ISTA files from this. I want to test it out on this new plate. And if we just take a look now at the slicer files, we can see why this is a quite good test. We've got lots of little parts, as you can see. Previously, I've done lots of prints like this with money parts in one sheet on the A1 Mini. And with the PLA plate, you often get like one or two parts or do not stick, or they kind of fall off mid-print. And why does this cause an issue? It's because when one or two fail, you can kind of screw up the rest of the parts. Either it's going to get stuck on the printer head, what's not good, or it's going to get loose and then you're going to have a bunch of string ink on certain areas. And that's, well, more mess, and it normally messes up your other parts. And a small printer, what's print really fast, like the A1 Mini, this can be an issue. And for this test today, we actually have some new filament. We have the new PLA wood from Bamboo Labs, and I picked up one of their Sparkle, the Galaxy Sparkle one as well and we're going to use that for the black parts but for the tracks i think it'd be quite cool to use it in this wood filament and we're also going to be testing this against a brand new pie plate to actually make it a fair comparison because the previous pie plate i had was an old one so we'll test against a new pie plate with the new cool super tack plates and see is it any good they're going to stick is the x useful I don't know. Let's get printing and find out. The first thing I've noticed about these cool super tight plates is, well, stop doesn't come off. Like you can see there. Like normally when they're cooled down, especially with the PIE plates with this one starting here, they would just fall off. But you gotta kinda of pull it. To deal with this, I use this little scraper tool. See this little blade here. Nice. I think this was for cakes. Not actual 3D printers, but it's much longer. Like you've seen the ones you get with the bamboo lab or other 3D printers. They have a small thin blade. I'm like, this is a very flat one, you can cut it at the surface and then you just skim it. And for comparison, here's the PEI plate, just comes off and off the plate. done at the angle and this is one printed earlier on the PEI plate. I'm not done the angle printed like that. Then all the prints let's take a look. We have the ones from the PEI plate and we have the ones from the super cool tack plate. I'm just looking at the results if you can put it clip. What is it best for these the tracks if you can see it a little closely yeah I can see it a bit a bit the surface is extremely flat on the super cool tag, as you expect, but we do have some remnants of layer lines coming through. Maybe it was some oh, flow rate issues, but you definitely can't make see them. But one good thing about the PEI plate is the texture kind of gets rid of that. So even if you don't have your filament dialed in, you can kind of get away with it. Another thing about this super cool tag plate as you can kind of see from the previous videos, is it sticks. There's no, so the PEI plate, you just pop it off really easy when it's cool. This stuff, you need a scraper tool to get it off. And if you don't have one of those, you're not gonna get it off. And this is kind of an issue, because a lot of people, I would think, will try and bend this plate. You get a lot of the bed warping could lead to that. I'm not sure how long this plate will last. I've already took so, prints, you've probably got like five prints already. 
There's already marks, as you can see on the print, just from taking stuff off. So I'm not sure if this is gonna last like six months, as I have with my previous PEI plates. But now we've printed it. Let's make a train. And there's very well documented instructions in English about all the steps to make this model. But there is one thing worth noting is the step here on page five, depending what country you are, as we can go here, the different versions of this instructions actually have different parts. And as we go here, there's another build option what uses this sort of connector. Well, it's only available right now in certain countries and for me in Japan, it's not available. So you need to check actually which one you have that's really important because if you read this one by mistake you may up getting annoyed like i actually did so yeah follow the instructions and you should be able to make your train A few moments later. So now we're back and here it is, the endless loop train. And this kit, I like these sort of kits, they're pretty cool, but it's more on the difficult side. As you've probably seen, lots of small screws will need to be screwed in with a 1.27 millimeter Allen key. And if you don't have one of these, you're pretty screwed. There's not one in the box. You need to buy a separate one for that. And as well, you need to buy magnets. There's small magnets for this to actually get it working. But as we see, my one's already broke. <laughs> so I need to like take it apart and remake it. But it's a pretty cool concept of a kit. And I hope they make more of these but rely less on glue. As you have to glue the base in and a lot of these parts when I feel like you could just have slot fit ins to make it much more accessible like this just slot in this side but the bases here have to be glued a lot and yeah i don't really like that like this 3d printing you shouldn't be able to use glue you shouldn't need to you can design it much better but the prints from the super cool pack plate do come out really nice we do see actually some that we've shown before we do see line marks on the first layer but we do have some under extrusion there so you can definitely calibrate in your settings to make it much nicer first layers but i don't think that's the main reason why you would buy this plate is for the nice first layer sort of thing if you're selling products you're really gonna buy this plate because you don't want failures the failure rate on this plate especially if you're doing complex models with stuff like support trees really sm like small marks on the first layer we're gonna expand out having that failure rate much lower is gonna help a lot Especially with the PEI plate, like if you do long prints and like was it half an hour in or like an hour in it comes loose, the whole print's gone. That just sucks. But with this super cool plate pack plate, it kind of negates that. It's so tacky. It just sticks too much. Like this is an example of some other stuff I'm printing for the next video. Like there's a wing here. It just even if you bend it. It's still not coming off. You're going to need a little cutter tool to actually get all this stuff off the build plate. And even after cutting it with a flat cutter, it doesn't really leave much marks on it. What's kind of interesting is what is actually this plate made of? That actually how long are these plates going to last is another question. If we don't know actually what this texture is, is it going to rear really quickly? Is it going to only be around? For like 100 prints 200 prints on the bamboo lab site for this product it says it can go over 300 prints without any adhesion reductions what's pretty cool but one thing i have noticed and i have read up about is if you're using ipa or like ethanol ethanol to like clean your plates do not use this on these super cool tag plates as that could damage it 
So I used to do that a lot with my PEI plates. So for now, it's just some soapy water or just a water and a towel to wipe off any excess. That kind of gets to the conclusion of who is this plate for? And I think it's hobbyists. People like me, but I want to print cool things and I don't want stuff to fail. And the time it takes to peel this off isn't really that much of a concern. A lot of people who post now on YouTube for 3D printing are more print farm oriented. They want to make money off these printers. And right now, I don't really care about that. I just want to make cool stuff and print cool things. If you want to make money off this as a hobby, this plate is probably not best for you because some of your prints are going to take a lot of time to cut off. And when they take time to cut off, you could actually start rushing, and if you start rushing, you lead to print failures because you might just yank it off and break a part of it. But I think it's actually a pretty good risk for these. Because if you are too rash of taking them off, you could definitely break them. Or break your parts, what I'm trying to say. So yeah, that's a little summary of my first test of the super cool tag plate. And there also seems to be some other brands now actually selling something very similar products. So if you're not a big fan of Bamboo Lab anymore, you can buy someone else's plate because there's still some controversy going around with some of the settings changing. But if you actually want a good summary on that, I found it's probably the best link there. Go and give it a watch. And yeah, and that ends today's episode. A little more hint of what's coming next. I've been putting a lot a lot. And we're actually going to start learning into printing anime grade miniatures. You can actually paint up from one of these. So we've got a lot of prints. And now we need to get that stuck together. But that'll be next time on Jarvis Labs. See you around.